In what's been described as a milestone movement, the Ministry of Defense will be working with the British company Accra Computing to explore the applications of quantum technologies in defense. In June 2022, it was announced that the Ministry of Defense had acquired the government's first quantum computer. Apparently, the acquisition could prove to be monumental, allowing the MOD to comb over problems that would have taken average computers years to solve, to be solved in a matter of minutes. First up, what is quantum computing plus the Ministry of Defense's goals? Quantum computers by design allow for complex problem solving that would have taken average computers years to solve, to be solved in minutes. Not only do they have the ability to solve complex calculations quicker, but they can solve problems regular computers wouldn't be able to. A qubit is a two-state unit of data processing, somewhat similar to the binary code used by most computers. However, quantum computers superimpose qubits with quantum mechanical processing. This brings about advanced computing that bridges any uncertainty. According to Accra's computing chief executive, Richard Murray, the company's partnership with the MOD could prove to be substantial, not just for the parties in question, but for the evolution of quantum computing as we know it. According to Murray, quote, our partnership with MOD gives us the type of hands-on close interaction, working with real hardware, which helps us to jointly discover new applications of this revolutionary new technology, unquote. While it's clear that quantum computers are far superior to regular ones, the question on everyone's mind is, are they necessary for the Ministry of Defense? The MOD insists that quantum technology would allow Britain to prepare themselves for, or ideally solve, the climate crisis. It was suggested that advancements would be made in pharmaceuticals and in the health sector, and naturally to support the military. Acro will be providing the MOD with their PT-1 computers, the first of their kind in quantum computing that can operate at room temperatures instead of the below freezing temperatures required by the head-sensitive qubits. Next, we have the application of quantum computing in defense. The 2019 publication of the Military Balance featured an essay titled Quantum Computing and Defense, which elaborated on the implications of using quantum technology by the military. At the time of the publication, the MOD had only touched upon the idea of employing quantum computing for the military. The idea was met with glee. People were anxious to witness the far-reaching impacts of quantum technology in law enforcement services, intelligence operations, and defense. Defense applications range from employing them on the battlefield in armored vehicles to guide military tactics, aiding platoons in active combat, and allowing military scientists to explore the effects of several toxins on the human body. Quantum mechanics have already been employed by companies such as Google, IBM, and Intel, but their application in the military was only fantasized about until the MOD announced in June of 2022 that they had acquired their first quantum computer from the government. Essentially, quantum computing works on quantum mechanics, which operates in superimposed conditions. Imagine binary commands, such as on or off, being juxtaposed and occurring at the same time. The technology makes use of quantum theories and particles which exist microscopically, essentially at levels smaller than atoms. However, the term quantum computing is a collective term. Quantum key distribution and quantum cryptoanalysis are the branches of quantum that are going to be used by the MOD. To put it simply, quantum key distribution would allow the military to secure their communications, and quantum cryptoanalysis has more offensive roles. Quantum key distribution. The more straightforward use of quantum computing for the military would be via quantum key distribution. How so? Based on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, a photon can only be examined if it were isolated. However, isolating a photon would irreversibly damage it. The military could use this principle to intercept third parties that are essentially eavesdropping on their communications. However, military receivers on the other end that were designed to intercept these messages could do so with their technology to elaborate the cryptographic keys. Quantum Cryptoanalysis Quantum cryptoanalysis has more offensive roles. Basically, when military receivers communicate with one another, they do so using elaborately encrypted messages. For example, the Advanced Encryption Standard 256 encryption is used by the United States military. Now, while other militaries can intercept the system, regular computers would take years to decode it. A computer, even the most advanced kind, would require billions of codes to break through an encrypted message. Most computers follow the simple trial and error method. 
This means that they check every possible combination, hoping that one would work in decrypting the message. Quantum cryptoanalysis increases the trial and error method by a hundredfold. Now, for some opinions on the Ministry of Defense's acquisition. The idea of the MOD having access to quantum technologies was met with some skepticism. Professor Winfried Hensheiner, head of the Sussex Center for Quantum Technologies at the University of Sussex, implied that while the application of quantum computing for the MOD was indeed significant, it would take time before the department would be able to fully optimize the potential of quantum computing. According to Professor Hensheiner, while the acquisition was indeed necessary, the MOD would be unable to solve problems yet. The full force of quantum computing could only be recognized by proper optimization of the system, and it might take some time. Think back to when computers were first introduced. The technology was bulky, heavy, and the ratio of sizing to capacity was way off. Quantum computers pose an additional problem with the qubit having to be frozen. Luckily, Acra Computing has access to machinery that allows the system to be smaller and more practical. The company makes use of photons, that is, single units of light to optimize machine learning tasks. News from the United Kingdom's Defense Science Expert Committee. Speaking about the MOD's acquisition of its first quantum computer by the government, Teals made it clear that the event was indeed a substantial move by the MOD, but gave little insight into the MOD's intended use of quantum computing. Murray was no different in providing vague details about the outcome of their partnership, besides, of course, the fact that it would be a monumental milestone. In 2019, however, the United Kingdom's Defense Science Expert Committee noted that quantum technology could be used to improve gravity sensors, or quantum gravimeters, that could detect moving masses underwater, including, but not limited to, submarines. The United Kingdom's Defense Science Expert Committee was interested in quantum computing's disruptive capacity and using that to create highly specific superconducting magnetometers that could detect the most minuscule changes in magnetic fields, thereby allowing the UK's military to intercept submarines or aircraft using quantum radars, including low observable STOVL aircraft. Currently, the Science Expert Committee makes use of quantum technology to miniaturize atomic clocks for more efficient positioning, navigating, and timing purposes. So, would quantum computers be able to replace regular computers? Notwithstanding the obvious edge quantum computers have over regular computers, people remain skeptical about whether or not quantum computing would be able to fully replace regular computers currently in use by the MOD. While the use of quantum technology is limited for now, and the fact that it would take years before the MOD would be able to fully optimize quantum mechanics for military-grade use, experts believe that quantum computing would never be able to replace modern computing. Again, quantum computing is superior to modern computing. However, their use is synergistic to modern computing and not an alternative to it. They have the capacity to solve problems that modern computers cannot, and it goes without saying that they were designed for specific uses, and it will take another few decades before quantum computers can excel at tasks that modern computers can perform. And finally, quantum technology used by other countries. Currently, China enjoys a technological edge over other nations in terms of quantum technology application. In 2016, Beijing announced plans to fully optimize quantum technology by the year 2030. The nation's claims of achieving major breakthroughs in quantum technology were followed shortly thereafter with the launch of the world's first quantum satellite, the Mises. In 2017, the satellite transported a photon to Earth, and the satellite gas completed quantum key distributions from orbit to ground stations in Xinglong in China and Grasse in Austria. In the same year, China established the world's first and longest terrestrial quantum communication link between Shanghai and Beijing, a proposed $10 billion quantum information sciences in Hefei, Anhui province, is currently underway and is expected to propel the nation in terms of quantum computing. There's also the United States. In 2016, the United States government allocated $200 million for quantum research, with the Department of Energy and National Science Foundation pledging another $250 million for quantum sensing, computing, and communications in 2018. While the United States military has announced its plans on employing the use of quantum computing for its application, private sector companies such as Google and IBM have decades worth of research in quantum sensing, computing, and communications to back them up. Combining the private sector companies in the United States with D-Wave systems in Canada, the West will soon have access to the same military-grade quantum computing technology as China. However, in 
In this case, the technology will be subletted to the government and governmental bodies by these companies who will, in all likelihood, reserve ownership of the technology. That's it for this video surrounding the Ministry of Defense's acquisition of the government's first quantum computer. What are your thoughts? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more updates. We'll see you back soon.